Hello everyone, you are joined for Flower Hour, episode 16. We've actually made it to 16 episodes, would you believe it? I'm going to be joined today by inspiring Vanessa. And I'm just looking forward to having this conversation with an inspirational young individual. So, lock in, ask questions. And most importantly, I hope everyone's had a good day. So, Vanessa, you can join whenever you're ready. Let's go. Hope this works. It should work. Hi, Vanessa. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm not too bad. Um, <laughs> I finished a quick little gym session. Then I was eating some food, and now I'm here, finally ready to do a podcast, Instagram Live with yourself. And I've been um, so excited to do this, actually. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on Flower Hour as well. It's really, really great what you're doing. And I'm really excited to answer all the questions as well. Most definitely. So what I'm first question of like, I have to ask you is I'll let you introduce yourself to okay. my audience <laughs> and your audience and for everyone watching. Um, so hi everyone, um, I'm Inspiring Vanessa, I'm 13 years old, well I'm almost 14, I'm 14 in three days but I am still 13 years old <laughs> and um, I'm an international multi award winning motivational speaker, I'm also a content creator and I'm also a new talk show host which is really really exciting as well so that kind of sums up what I do but otherwise I do a lot of different things. <laughs> oh wow that's amazing, multi award winning and you're just um, going to present a new show because from what I saw it's going to be on Amazon Prime TV called the Inspiring Vanessa show. Um, yeah so it's already on Amazon Prime there are three episodes up there um, right now and it's like my own show interviewing some of the guests obviously that we bring on the show I'm just like talking about their journey and as I've obviously grown up like doing speaking I saw like when I was nine years old so I've been doing this for like four years and obviously that's given me the opportunity to go to different events and meet so many people. So I've obviously gotten and gained a lot of knowledge, which I am very, very grateful for. But other kids don't get that same opportunity. Yeah. So I thought, why don't we make a show that isn't just all about interviewing other people, but it's all about giving young people a platform to tune in, learn about relevant topics that are happening in the world. Because we're trying to keep people educated. Um, and also just giving them a platform or a place to learn about new things or learning about different career paths, which I think is going to be really beneficial for some kids. So we've been getting a lot of feedback from parents and watching it with their kids as well. So we're really, really happy with where it's going right now. And um, what more episodes will be coming out soon. So stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> How did you go about securing a show on Amazon Prime TV? Because... I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, I need to step up my game. <laughs> I'm thinking I need to do better. I'd love to know, what was it like when you got that email or you got that call saying, yes, we've got your show on Amazon Prime TV? And what was that journey like to even get the show? Um, I mean, I think when we just realised it was actually on there, and when we were looking it up, um, and obviously just typing in the name and actually being there. And obviously because Amazon Prime is a place where you watch TV shows and like movies. So seeing my face next to all these massive like blockbuster films and their posters, it was so surreal. Um, I never really thought that it would be a place to be on Amazon Prime, but thank goodness that it is because that gives um, it more of a platform and hopefully that can go on to bigger platforms um, in the future as we also do start to progress in the show. But I think it was a really heartwarming moment for my mum and I and just because we both work extremely hard my mum probably works harder than I do but we both <laughs> I think work equally really really hard um just for inspiring Vanessa and what it is so I think um just seeing the show all come together um was really amazing I'm just so glad that we created the opportunity and obviously it came to us and that's kind of what we're always talking about that if people aren't going to give you the opportunity then you have to create it yourself and that's why we had the show there so I think it was a really great moment and we're very really grateful about um where it's going and the feedback we're getting back from it too oh yeah absolutely and you said you've got three episodes and you said previously as well that you started doing everything that you're doing now at nine years old how did that begin and what has that <laughs> journey been like because you're, you're still only 13 you started at nine so what was that journey like coming all that way um, it was a very, very 
very much of a roller coaster you can say it was a, it's been a crazy journey so far and it's still continuing to obviously um, go on but I started when I was nine years old as you were saying as well um so that was four years ago so my mum started her personal development journey um in kind of network marketing and health and wellness so that um obviously it allowed me to go to start going to the events and because my mum is a single mum a single parent she didn't want to keep paying for a babysitter every single time she had to go out one evening to go to an event so I would come with her so even if I was sitting in the back of the room with my headphones on watching YouTube videos or a movie I was still subconsciously taking in all this information and everything they were talking about so um one of the events that we went to which was the first time I went on stage very unexpected wasn't meant to happen but very grateful and thankful that it did um we went to an event like a seminar and it was all about parents and kids so my mum was like okay this is perfect this is going to be great for both of us as well and one of the speakers who were there at the event we were following on social media at the time and for me that was the first person that I saw as a motivational speaker because before that I would never know what a motivational speaker was an entrepreneur was my mum and I couldn't even pronounce that word before we actually started learning about the industry. <laughs> um, so it was really, really fun to um, actually meet him because I was kind of saw him as, as a celebrity. Um, and then like, I don't know, five or two minutes before he was going on stage, he was like, Vanessa, you should come on stage with me. And I was like, oh, okay, can I just talk about this for my mum for a second? And I was like, no, I do not want to go on stage. <laughs> um, and despite the fact that I obviously saw him on stage and that gave me a little bit of a confidence boost. I think I was definitely more introverted at nine years old than I am now. I still do say that I'm an introvert, but I'm more of an outgoing introvert now because I can still talk mm. <laughs> as much as I can. So I'm very, very bubbly when I do get to know people. Um, but my mum kind of gave me those encouraging words. No one's asking you to do a TED talk, not an hour speech. You just say some words and just go on stage with him. So um, I was like, okay, I'll do it. Um, so then we went on stage. Um, he made me like really like bring up the audience. He just was really hyped up. I felt, um, but obviously me being quite like introverted, I was like very scared and nervous. I was literally yeah. shaking. Um, but because of my mum's journey, um, I was really listening to like audio books, um, like the secret and the power. So I really had some kind of idea of affirmations or quotes. So I just went on stage and I was like, believe in yourself dreams do come true um self-love is key or, or something along those lines but afterwards um people are coming back to me saying you're really good on stage that really helped me thank you um and that really like confused me because I was like something that I just came up with just randomly um was actually helping someone in some kind of way that I never thought it would so I think the realization of speaking being able to be a place that I can help people and also talk and have freedom and travel around the world and do that um I think was a really massive eye opener for me so after that event um I was like mum can I make a YouTube channel mum can I be a speaker and thank goodness she was um the supportive parent and mum that she is and that's basically when it all started when that kind of idea sparked Oh, wow. So your mum took you on the journey while she was also on her journey. Yes. You were asked <laughs> to go on stage when you weren't expected to. And similar to myself, um, I would definitely describe myself as introverted. I would say I'm introvert, extrovert. So I'm extrovert when I have mm. to be, but I'm more <laughs> introverted than I have anything else. I can, definitely. I can stay away from people for an extremely long time. But so you've gone on this journey, you know, you said to your mum, I want to start the YouTube channel. Mum, I want to do this. Mum, I want to do that. How did you plan everything? Because it's, sometimes we have these dreams that we don't bring into reality. What was the steps that you took to make everything that you dreamed about now is a reality? Um, how I planned everything? Like, yeah. Um, I think it was like, well, we started to make vision boards. So that was a massive like stepping stone in kind of visualizing what you want to achieve in the future. And I think maybe the, by the time I was 10, I kind of already had a clear vision of what I wanted to do. And still people who are my age going into like year 10 or year 11, they still don't know what they want to do as a job when they're older. So yeah. for me, I think I'm very thankful that I had that whole experience and I actually know what I want to do. And I have a clear kind of vision or focus of where, of where I want to go in the future. I think vision boards was a massive like um, element of obviously planning dreams. Um, but I think we're just always trying to do something that would help us work towards it. I think that was the biggest thing for us. So anything, any event we did, any person we met, it had to kind of be 
for whatever we wanted to go for in the future, not just going there for the sake of it, which is actually something we always did in the beginning of my career. And now we're realizing that time is so important. And there have been so many events that I've gone and spoken to. I've met a few people that we wouldn't have been able, been able to meet if it wasn't for that event, but it was in a way not the best use of time yeah. because I wasn't really getting anything out of it. Um, so I think now we're very more focused on what we want to do and how we're going to plan events that are going to actually help us get opportunities in the future. Um, so I think now definitely a big kind of stepping stone part of it, just kind of having to realise that we need to value our time and basically what we are as a business, as a career. Um, so me and my mum definitely had to think that through um, quite a lot. But we're glad that we're kind of in that place that we know what to do now. I can imagine and I think when you think about how important your mum has been to becoming the young woman that you are now, and you're still growing, you're still going to go on to do amazing things. I would love to know. So, you know, typically the average 13 year old, I'm sure goes to school, comes home, plays games. I don't know, maybe goes out. What is a typical day in the life of Vanessa like? Yeah. What is it like? <laughs> um, so I'm going to do one before quarantine and one during quarantine, okay, perfect, like right perfect. now, kind of, because um, the schedule has changed slightly, but not that much. Um, so on a normal school day when I'd be actually going to school, because um, I always got to school earlier to have like breakfast at school, um, I'd wake up at around like 6 or 6.30, get the bus. So I'd be at school like an hour or a half an hour earlier before the day started, sometimes even earlier than that. Um, obviously I'm there to like 2.50 around that so I'll get home maybe like 3.30 sometimes 4 depending on how busy the bus is um, but I'll get home and then I probably have to edit a YouTube video film a YouTube video um, now I've been doing Instagram live so that wasn't really a case before quarantine but I probably have to do like a YouTube video or something like that and if we had to rush to like a movie premiere after the event wow. it would be like okay rush home like run all the way up to the hill to the bus stop, get on the bus. <laughs> then we're just going to quickly get the dress on, put the makeup on, jump on the train and then go to the event. So that's sometimes how it would be like um, when I had a normal school day. Um, and then during quarantine now, the time I wake up in the morning is just different now. My yeah, whole schedule imagine. has slightly changed. Um, but I think recently I've been waking up at around like 9 or 9.30, which isn't really that bad. It's not, it's not like 5 o'clock in the evening, so my whole day is like completely <laughs> gone. Um, but I usually wake up, then in the evenings I do the Instagram live interviews, either people interviewing me like now, or when I interview um, them. Um, throughout the day, sometimes we obviously do have guests over to interview them, which is really, really fun and exciting to kind of see how the show is going to be planning out too. Um... I have edited quite a lot of YouTube videos and filmed quite a lot of them. I still have videos that I filmed like last week or not, not last week, so like last month that I haven't even gotten to edit yet. So I need to keep writing it down to make sure that I know what to do in that a video that I just took my time on. It's just completely forgotten. I mean, my whole footage of um, videos on my camera. So I'll probably film a video or edit a YouTube video. Um, if we need to do something for like a brand or a PR company, then I'll do a video for them or just do like an Instagram story. But otherwise, um, through quarantine, I had to also do my schoolwork as well. So that was a bit stressful, to be honest, so having to try and edit and film videos as well as um, obviously having to do my schoolwork. But now it's OK because we're on summer holidays. Um, so in my free time, I'm literally just lying on my bed, probably scrolling through TikTok. Um, watching Netflix or watching YouTube. So it's a pre pretty busy day. And um, the more you kind of think in depth with it, it's not that much, but probably to other people it is. <laughs> no, I can imagine because I've always, you know, typically when people look on um, things such as Netflix or Amazon, they would love to see themselves. You literally, as, as you said, you see yourself next to other people, next to big names, and you're thinking, that's me. All the work mum and myself have done can you see me? Ooh. Yeah. Yep, you're good. <laughs> it suddenly went black for a moment. I don't know what happened. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> so, no, sorry. I was saying, yeah, so it's all the hard work your mum and yourself have done has come to fruition. And you've got to balance schoolwork. You've got to balance so much in life. Is there, has there ever been a moment where you thought, this is too much for me? I, I just need a break. And if so, if you've ever felt like that, how have you gone about taking that break that's needed and coming back? with full energy to your career and to your business? 
Um, the answer to that question is definitely yes. And I say definitely because obviously what I do is quite overwhelming. Yeah. I think if I didn't start it at nine and kind of, I think I've always been quite mature for my age, but through speaking, I've become very mature and just very like hardworking, which I think I've always been, but doing speaking has definitely emphasized that and reinforced that. Um, but I definitely say yes, because what I do is can be quite overwhelming sometimes. Um, I do believe that it was last year in like July. Um, I was doing daily YouTube videos. Oh, wow. And that was never doing it again. That must be, that <laughs> it's must the best have been way to sum it so up. So hectic. Yeah. Um, wow. Over quarantine, we probably could have done daily videos because we've got so much content because I've yeah. done the Instagram live interviews onto YouTube as well. Yeah. Obviously, I've had so much time on my hands to film. So there's a lot of content. Um, but last year, um, I had like my end of term exams. Um, in like year eight and I just didn't know what to do because daily videos were so much because I'd come home every evening and be like there's no videos coming out tomorrow we need to film something or edit something or put something together and I was always like being really like on the edge which I didn't think was meant to happen um we did try and do it to help grow the channel which I definitely think it boosted it somehow but for me my mental health was going completely off the rails like I didn't oh, know wow. what I was doing um so like around July I thought posted a YouTube video saying guys, I'm going to stop YouTube for like, however long I need to. Yeah. It won't be a year because I know that I can kind of rebuild myself over that time. So it's not going to be like a year I'm going to just quit um, overall. But I just said I'm probably going to quit for maybe around two weeks or just kind of rethink the content I want to make and think about the schedule. And um, so that was a really big learning curve. And a lot of people kind of gave me positive um feedback from it which I'm really really happy with um, and I'm really grateful that my followers and that my viewers and my inspirators are very supportive of my de decisions that I do on social media so I think I stopped doing YouTube for maybe like a month maybe okay um because I had to focus on my tests because my school was kind of like getting my mind juggled up um but after that I kind of came back stronger so I think my mental health has always been something that i didn't think about at first I didn't think it was that important but obviously as other people have spoken up about mental health it's allowed me to become more understanding of what it's like to be really anxious about different things yes. or really stressed out and for me when I get stressed out it's like really bad stress yeah like it is insanely bad like I don't know like I can't think straight almost and um, it's not like a little bit of stress here and there it's like really full-on um so I think my mental health has definitely been a really big learning curve for me and now I'm a very big advocate for it. So I love speaking to people about mental health or trying to empower other kids that your mental health is really valid and really important. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was a really big um, stepping stone and part of my career, my highlight of my career, even though it was really hard for me to kind of pause the channel, um, even though I knew that people kind of relying on me to watch my videos every day. But I think, I think it was a very big highlight of my journey because I personally took the time up for myself and not for anyone else, which is something that I haven't or I don't do that often. Yeah. I'm always the person who's there for everyone else. And people yeah. sometimes they give me the same respect back, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I've received that in friendships in the past as well. So I think definitely that break um, on YouTube last year was really important to me and i'm really glad that i did do it and i'm really happy with my decision and i do not regret it <laughs> oh wow so you took that break from youtube and you realized because of all the pressures that were going on that you just needed to have a break completely mm. people as you said were relying on you and sometimes i think as content creators we forget that we have to sit back and take time for ourselves and we also yes. have to take care of ourselves so what does Vanessa do now differently compared to then? How do you take care of yourself? What do you do in your downtime? And most importantly, what makes you happy? Um, so what I do in my downtime is um, literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> literally nothing. Because I do so much um, every day. Yeah. Just doing nothing is enough for me. Just to lie in bed and just like sleep or something. Yeah literally just being lazy which I love to do anyways um, I definitely <laughs> I definitely mastered that um that tactic over quarantine but I just love being lazy just kind of just not really caring about anything just being like okay I'm just gonna lie in bed watch Netflix watch movies just kind of just be normal like an average teenager <laughs> um, yeah. to be honest um so that's like the biggest thing for me just kind of watching television watching a movie with my mum 
just watching like a Netflix or TV show series um, on my bed. It's something I do very, very often. And I've kind of learned to accept that and own that, that it's okay to just be lazy sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Um, but what makes me happy, um, definitely not my mum. She's like my the biggest happiness um, source in my life, definitely. Don't know where I'd be, where I would be without her, um, or what we'd be what we'd be doing now without uh, my mum's kind of permission to do what I do. Um, I mean, I love helping people. That's always my biggest passion. That's why I started doing speaking to help other people in some kind of way, whether that be through speaking, the talk show now, um, social media or videos, podcasts, whatever it is some kind of way to help other people as well um i love to travel i love my cat i adore her i've literally <laughs> just become 10 times more obsessed with my cat um, over quarantine she's loving all the love from myself um all the cuddles and um i also love zendaya okay i mean very very, very <laughs> iconic um very very obsessed with her as well she's an amazing like inspiration um that's been around in my life for a very very long time mm. those are things that kind of make me happy but otherwise just day-to-day -day things that are just really average just mm. put a smile on my face which i think has been really important because now i've really learned to appreciate more things around me as well so i think that's something that we should all kind of focus on a bit more um appreciation and gratitude but you said you know that the average person and i think evidently you're not the average person because i because <laughs> I'm 26 and I wish at 26, I knew now, I knew, I, I wish I knew at 13 what I know now and, and acted on it the way yeah. that you have, you know. The way you've gone about it, I think is absolutely fantastic. And again, I've got, just got to say a quick thank you for taking the time to even have a conversation with me because you did also say your time is valuable and time essentially is money. And to come on the platform and even have a conversation means a lot to me and I'm sure it's going to mean a lot to everybody that is watching. So typically, most people call uh, people that watch their stuff or follow them fans. You call them inspirators, right? Yes. <laughs> why do you call them inspirators and not fans or not um, followers? Yeah, why would you call them inspirators? And thank you for saying I got a nice coat, but it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's a, a retro shirt, I think. <laughs> um, I call my fans or followers inspirators um i used to just say like hey guys on youtube that's just something everyone said that was my intro my old intro was hey guys it's Vanessa. <laughs> i'd always do this with my hand um so my mum like when we just started watching my old video she'd always like mimic me doing that because it was really <laughs> embarrassing so we're not going to go back to that um but um i started to realize like you know justin Bieber's followers or fans have believers or yeah, yeah. you just have different fan or like fandoms so i was like okay so what can i do that can kind of give a sense of like family and union um to the people who follow me on youtube and instagram or whatever it is um so we like went on instagram we were like can you send in names that kind of go with the word inspiring or inspiration so somebody come up, came up with like inspirates like pirates and i was yeah. like not the best branding um thing but i do yeah. like the idea so then somebody sent in, I think, Inspirators. And I was like, I really like that. So ever since, it's just kind of been, hey, Inspirators, because that's how we address each other. And I think it's just really important to remember and that other people know that you are part of something. Because yeah. I think a really common thing, people turn to YouTube or social media when they're feeling alone. Yeah. So when they turn onto a video, it's like, hey, Inspirators, you're my Inspirator. Even though we, might, we may not know each other personally, you're still part of my family, a part of what I do. I think that's really a big part of like union as well. And also just calling someone a follower isn't the best thing. And um, you want to be a leader. You don't want to be somebody um, who follows other people yeah. and actually being a leader. And I think that's something that we're always trying to keep reminding people of. Um, so I think through my career, I've met lots of leaders. Um, so they're definitely not followers. They don't just follow the trend or follow other people and what they do. Yeah. They're trying to obviously stand out, which I think is really important. So even though I do sometimes refer to fans and followers, most of the time I also do say inspirators because that is what we call them. <laughs> and you know that you inspire so many people. And as you said, people watch your page and they watch your YouTube or watch all your social media and your content. And they come to you probably when they feel alone and they want to be inspired. And I'm in awe utterly of you. I'm just sitting here and I'm listening. Thank I'm thinking, you. <laughs> as I said before, I think, Sean, you've got to fix up, you know? You've got to fix up. So I'm going to have to come to you and take some tips. But 
I would love to know who has been, I know you said Zandaya is a big role model of yours, but has there been a public speaker or an individual you've always wanted to emulate and just how important have they been in you envisioning your future? Probably Zendaya. Zendaya. Like, I can't think of anyone else, to be honest. Because um, when I, I obviously grew up watching, like, Disney Channel. So um, I didn't exactly grow up watching Shake It Up. Because I just was a bit too, I think I was a bit too young for that. I started watching, like, Disney Channel maybe around, like, seven, eight or nine. So I wasn't exactly, like, around age when that kind of came out. But Casey Undercover was the show that kind of set it all for me. I was like, yep, that's the person I'm going to look up to. Because I just looked up to her automatically. I think it's because she's obviously biracial yes. and I kind of saw myself in her almost or just seeing a person of colour on my television Absolutely. and that kind of gave me the idea that oh you can be on television you can do that um, and I also think that she's a massive role model for me in like the acting industry as well and she does stand up for movements she's a massive advocate for Black Lives Matter as well which I think is amazing so that kind of tells me that I'm supporting the right person in a way and I Absolutely. think she's always been a massive just inspiration to lots of other people so I would probably say her of all people um just kind of being an inspiration for me and just allowing me to know that you can do the same things that she does because everybody has to start from somewhere absolutely and I I think you made a very good point you said yourself that you're mixed race biracial um that seeing someone like Zendaya on television reminds you that you can make it and that your dreams will be a reality so I wanted to ask you how important do you believe representation is for young girls such as yourself who want to be on television, who want to be in the acting industry? Because I know you also model as well, and we're going to get onto that after. So yeah, <laughs> just how important is it to see someone like Zandaya on television and go, hey, mom, look, there's someone just like me. I can make it. Mm. Um, I think racial representation is a massive thing that needs to be talked on more often and um, people are just kind of so used to it and it's so normalized in society now that people just don't really see the importance of talking about it and it's yeah. like well no because if you went into a toy store and all the barbies were black for example or had afro hair curly hair and if that was the racial representation in society then that would be the beauty standard in society but because we obviously yeah. grew up watching white actors on television white barbie dolls that kind of stimulates in your mind that this is what we're meant to look like this is what you're meant to be like so if you're not that ideal version of beauty or standard then you're not the right person or you're not correct you're not normal if that makes sense yeah so i think when um you see a black actor or a black television presenter or star just somewhere in the public eye, it really does bring up a lot of inspiration and people just like, thank you for doing what you do because there are so many obviously people or people of color, black people, Asian people who obviously been in the industry and have had racial experiences, ra race, racist experiences, sorry. Um, and they still continue to go on despite that. Um, so I think in any industry you go to, there's always going to be that kind of stigma around it. Um, but if we did grow up in a society where a certain race, other than the Caucasian or white race, um, that that would be the beauty standard, that people would want to be black if there were black people everywhere, on the billboards, everywhere. If you think about it, if the roles were reversed, that's what life would be like. But unfortunately, it isn't because apparently the lighter you are, the more privileged you are, the better or prettier you are. Um, so I think we need to just tell everyone that it is everyone is equal and yep, we need to exactly. teach people that everyone is equal and make sure that they are treating people equally so i know from hearing <laughs> that answer and some of the things you've said before your mentality is strong i would like to probably describe your mind as reinforced steel not many things are <laughs> going to get through to it so you know black lives matter recently came about it was in the news and the call <laughs> for representation was a really big thing how did you feel watching the unfortunate death of George Floyd, but also how Black Lives Matter has done so much to change society, to be more inclusive for black people. How do you feel about the Black Lives Matter movement? Um, I mean, I'm a massive advocate for Black Lives Matter. I support it a thousand percent, um, even more than that, if I can. Um, I didn't personally watch the death of George Floyd on the video. Mm. I only found out about it on Instagram. I saw people posting about it and I was like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden you see 
all these other victims coming up like Breonna Taylor and you kind of just start to see what's actually been happening and obviously I've been educated on the police brutality and whatever it and like the subject of it um but the more you start to see it um, on social media and online you can see that other people are starting to really open their eyes up they're starting yeah. to really understand what's going on and I'm like how have you just realized this now how have you just realized that white privilege is a thing how have you just realized that people die because they are black or because of the color of their skin mm. how have you just realized that so I don't understand how people are quite ignorant or quite blind to it but I'm glad that people who were ignorant past tense are starting yes. to speak up about it and starting to use their privilege or just use their voice and not like, like educating themselves so they are changing for the better so they are an exception um but people who are just continuing to still be ignorant towards it mm. or just treat it like a trend how come 26 million people posted a black square on yeah. blackout tuesday but only this same amount of people signed the petition to george floyd yeah. how how come is that just because you see your friend posting it you think you're just going to post as well no this isn't a trend if people didn't just die for you to have a cute instagram feed absolutely so i don't understand why people really have that mentality and it's so disgusting to me as well um but i think the constant thing that i always think about is although i am half white and half black mm. i have had experiences that kind of just make you a bit mad yeah even though i'm obviously not as dark as a dark-skinned black person i probably would be seen in society as a light-skinned person even though i am biracial but that's how i would be seen as so sometimes it's like oh how come your mom is lighter than you or is that your mom like how do, <laughs> how does that work and i'm like are you guys really that blind to it like somebody can be mixed raced um but i just think it's obviously a really massive movement and i think that if people just continue to keep posting about it as well um, and just reminding people that it's not a trend and this isn't just something that you just post about for one month and then you go back to your cute Instagram feed as well. <laughs> and also influencers, celebrities, doing a repost of someone's story is not speaking up about it. The good posting thing I... a photo of Breonna Taylor or George Floyd and not posting any petitions, any sources, you're not doing anything, you're just following the trend, you're not doing anything to actually support the movement or taking action towards it. I was going to say, it's a good friend, I got my tea, because <laughs> you're delivering all sorts of truths <laughs> that many people, it's hard for some people to hear. And we've touched on, I suppose, what we would call performative activism, where some mm. people feel they're doing something, or clicktivism, where they do a click, they do a repost, they're like, mm. all right, I've done my job now, but my Instagram feed has got to stay pretty. I would love to know, Vanessa, you know, as you said, you're a brand, you're a business, and I know you have to choose the people that you work with very carefully. So how would you go about that? Let's say there's been an incident in the past where a company hasn't been altogether progressive in their thinking. Would that turn you off or would you be more likely to give that brand a chance to clear their name? Um, I wouldn't give them a chance. I don't think I would. Um, with like other brands that have been called out for just having predominantly white models um, on like a billboard or just mm. like a campaign i'm um, actually one of my guests my friend rihanna she's going to be on the show later on so stage for the episode but she's a model so we're talking about um racism in the industry and diversity yeah so campaigns would be like oh we're diverse because we have a whole white model cast but we only have one mixed race person so not only are they not fully black but they also just represent diversity which obviously isn't the case yeah um so i don't think i'll really give the brand that kind of attention or because i don't want my brand to be associated with that absolutely i'm not going to be advocating for black lives matter or just any topic that is that is normal or, or should be normal to talk about i don't want to be associated with that and just because people are calling you out for it you're just going to suddenly start putting on latina models you're going to suddenly put on asian models you're going to suddenly start putting on black models because then you're being told to do it you aren't doing it from your heart you weren't yeah. doing it because you just thought it was correct to do so in the beginning. Yeah. You're just doing it because you're being told to, which I think is really wrong. Um, so people just don't want to be cancelled or people just don't want the brand to go bankrupt. But I do not yeah. think I would want to be associated with that. If one of my friends started to say all lives matter or they decided to just be ignorant towards the movement, I would drop them. <laughs> oh, wow. I just wouldn't be friends with them. So you're because... telling me at 13 you just cut ties with them. You said no. Nope, yes, because I... I can't deal with it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm grateful that all my friends are very opinionated on the movement and are supportive of the movement because otherwise I wouldn't want to be friends with someone 
who is just ignorant about that and just mm. not educated on it. Um, so if someone, if one of my friends started to say, oh, why does my Black Lives Matter? Or if one of my white friends said the N word, I'm not going to be friends with them because you yeah. know it's wrong, but you still said it. Oh, but I have black friends. Oh, well, I'm not blind because I have friends that can see. It's the same thing. Yeah, and I think some people say, when if someone says I don't see color, then you, the best thing you can say to them is I guess you don't see colored patterns either. Then mm. it's very much that kind of ideology. You cut people off at thirteen, Vanessa. At thirteen, <laughs> it's taken well, me I a lot just... to understand it, but now I'm at the point where I can just be like, Yoop. "Sorry, no." But at <laughs> thirteen, all I wanted to do was play football and have as many friends <laughs> as I could. Listen, I'm not athletic, I, but I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, like, I need your mind. I would love to have, have your mindset. Like, honestly, I think people are going to look back at this live and be like, wow, this young girl, you know, you're so clued up. And someone in the comments said they couldn't even um, articulate themselves at your age. And I agree, <laughs> I couldn't. I thought I was smart, but goodness. <laughs> Thank you. I, like, you're making me have to, again, I'm going to have to check myself. I'm going to have to check myself, really and truly. <laughs> But no, so, you know, the friends you have around you, so this is me taking out of a political and a race context. Mm -hmm. I know the work you do is so important and I know you do lots of inspirational work. So how important is your friendship circle to you, even at your young age? Um, I'm always a person that says, surround yourself with people who will lift you higher. Mm. Surround yourself with people who are positive. So I think... Um, beforehand I wouldn't really care about my friends as long as I had a friend yeah so it didn't matter how close I was to them or what they've done in the past or how they reacted to other people in situations it's just like you have a friend that's the most important thing yeah but it doesn't matter if they're a fake friend or if they're a loyal friend it just mm. matters if they're a friend um really we need to understand the definition of what a friend is and how you should be treated yeah um equally on both sides of the friendship um I'm very grateful that I surround myself with people who are positive um who kind of have the same beliefs as I do as well um so my, my school friends um I'm very careful with who I surround myself with if you're gonna start mocking what I do or just start really taking like any kind of rudeness out of it or trying to make it into a joke and um, then I'm not gonna be hanging around, hanging around with you if I had the same class as you I'll be hot I'll be like say hi to some people that's too fake that's fake but that's just me being polite Absolutely. I'm not just gonna completely cut you off if we go to the same school if we're in the same environment but if I had the opportunity or the chance to hang out with you, I'm not going to do it because I know you're not the right, you're not the right person that I should be surrounding myself with um, or the same type of mindset as I do. Um, but then like friends that are outside of school, like in the industry, they, but we get each other because it doesn't matter if they don't do speaking, but they do something else that is as busy as I do. We understand our schedules and we understand how hard it is for both of us. So really it's more of like an, opening up experience with my friends because we actually get to understand each other and and at my school we've seen not everybody has a youtube channel and has a speaking career or has a talk show now or just runs a social media platform um consistently so i think just my friends are outside of the school um environment and actually in the industry like i am then we really understand each other and yeah. i know that they are like-minded people and are positive and they want to achieve the same things and they want we want to support each other um and lift each other higher so i think definitely um surrounding myself with positive people is really really important um just people who kind of accept me for me yeah if i can't go to your birthday party because i have an event i wish i could cancel it but unfortunately i can't yeah of course. um but they accept that they won't just kind of bash me for it they won't be like oh my god you're always at the event blah 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 you're always on your phone that's not what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's not what I want to hear. If you have something going on that you can't come to whatever I'm doing, then I'm just going to be accepting of that. Absolutely. As long as you're kind of understanding what I do and you and I understand what you do, then that's that's just where the friendship begins. So I think it's just really trying to understand each other is the main thing for me and not to kind of just dislike what not I'm okay with people disliking what I do because that's just gonna be what it is in the industry. If you just kind of are negative about it then i don't want to be around you because your energy is negative <laughs> um, i do not want that um around myself yeah <laughs> wow you can cut the friends and your friends have to understand that <laughs> i am vanessa and this is what i've got to do you're not getting in the way i honestly respect that and as i said 
when are you going to release that book? Because it looks like I'm going to have to be purchasing all sorts. I'm looking forward for the life story when you release your autobiography. Oh, you know, maybe it will happen in the future. I mean, I already have three books now. Um, three books? Well, yeah, I do have three books. I am an author. Um, but maybe when I'm older, I can just kind of really talk about my whole life story right now. Because um, four years of my speaking career, just 14 years, doesn't seem like the most interesting thing, but maybe it would be. So you never know. No, you I, never I, know. <laughs> I generally think it's interesting. I would love to hear more about yourself as an author. So you have three books. Could you tell us about your three books and what they're about? Yeah. Um, so the first book is an audio book. The first one that I published is called The 12 Keys to Success. Amen. Um, then the second book is called The Five Secrets to Public Speaking Success, um, which is basically all about how confidence has, or my com how my confidence has grown, sorry, um, through the speaking industry and basically how you can grow your confidence um, and just learn to help other people as well as mastering the stage. Um, and then my third book is called Vanessa's Book of Quotes, which is a book of 30 quotes that I've made myself. But they also have the meanings um, on yeah. the page as well, so people can understand the logic behind the quote, because I know that when I've read out a quote and I've said it to my mum, she doesn't understand it. And I'm like, well, how? It's just, it's like, it's so obvious. But for me, that's just how my brain works. And some people don't really understand it that way. So I'm like, okay, if I can write, write out the meaning of the quote and what it, like the message behind it, then people can actually get the best out of it and the best out of this advice that this quote is trying to give them. So that is my free books. Yeah. What? All right. So you said you wrote a quote of book, um, a book of quotes. So I've got to yeah. ask you, what's your favorite quote? And what is the quote you live by the most? Um, my favourite quote would probably be, opportunities are like bubbles. Okay. So try, no, yeah, opportunities are like bubbles, so you need to catch them before they pop. So um, for me, I've always been like quite stingy about getting out of my comfort zone, but over the years I've kind of learned that if something is out there that could bring me or my career to the next level, then I'm going to take that. I'm going to take the opportunity, otherwise it's just going to fly away and then it's going to be taken by someone else, if that makes sense. Yeah. Someone else is going to be taking um, that place. Um, so definitely that quote is something has been like one of my favourite quotes. And yeah. I also kind of live by that, but the other quote that I live by the most is um, when you feel like giving up, think of the reason why you started. Absolutely. That's always oh, been a gosh. massive thing. Purpose yeah. and your why is the most, is the most crucial thing as to what people do if you don't have a reason as to why you're doing something then when you don't know what to do then you're not going to have a reason to look back on or keep you moving forward so what is your reason what's your why like because i suppose sometimes i think even at my age i'm not always sure of what i want to do i'm not always certain i know there's things i want to do and i know i'm gonna have to get there and typically when you think about the journey i think humans we're programmed now in the society we live in to be to have instant gratification. We have to have yeah. see the results <laughs> now. But then there's a quote that I live by where it's, you don't plant the seed the same day and expect a tree to grow. It takes time mm -hmm. for the tree to um, bear yes. fruit and so much more. So what's your why and what is your, what, what do you believe your purpose is? Um, so my why or why I started um, is to empower young children, young people to grow their confidence and let them know that they can be whoever they want to be and achieve their goals or their dreams. Um, Cause I just want young people to obviously grow up with that mentality so that more people can grow up helping more people. Um, so that's kind of that domino effect. Um, but my purpose um, I think in this world is to just help other people. If it means through doing speaking, then that's what it is. If it just means by putting a smile on someone's face, just a stranger, and you, you don't know what they're going through, but that smile could have so saved true. their life that day. It's so you so never true. really know. So I think it's just my purpose is to just help other people and use my voice for things or for, yeah, just use my voice for things that don't have a voice and just be a voice for this silence. Absolutely. And do you believe that with your purpose and with your why, there comes a great sense of responsibility? Um, yes, um, I would definitely say that. And when I was doing my mental health awareness post um, this year, I think it was around May, I'm not exactly sure, but um, I did a post about just kind of opening up about how I was feeling about quarantine and lockdown and basically what was going on with my mental health, other people could kind of relate to that. Yeah. And I was saying that it's a really big responsibility and pressure to kind of 
post about different things and inspire other people. Because if I don't post a video, then I don't know if I could be missing out on someone, if that makes sense. So it's always been a massive kind of pressuring thing that I need to keep helping others um, because they are kind of relying on me. But then somebody commented on my post. Um, her name's actually Vanessa as well. We've, we've got like name twins. Um, but she commented on my post and she was like, you can't fill other people's glasses when yes. your glass is empty. Yep. And I was like, wow. Thank you so much for commenting that on my post because that really just like, blew my mind and it's so so simple but it makes so much sense as well so I need to be fully positive to be making other people positive I can't be just pouring out um from an empty cup absolutely and I know you have a lot of positive fans you have a lot of people even through the live they've been again just enamored by your presence and simply for the words Thank you're you. speaking and you, you you're practicing what you preach so I'd love to ask you, I know with, when it comes to social media and being a content creator, you're going to have trolls, right? Has there, been, <laughs> have there, has there been a troll where you've sat down and thought, wow, this person really doesn't understand why I'm doing what they're doing? And it, has, it, has it really sat with you, I suppose? Because I know there's a lot of psychology tests that say you can read 10 positive comments, but one positive co a negative and just like, can go all the way down. Exactly. Yeah. And I'd love to know, how do you battle the trolls? How do you go, oh, that's such a troll. I'm going to do what I'm doing. I'm going to stay mm. on the straight and narrow. Um, so when I, when I shared what I did um, to my school in primary school, um, when I got my first award for doing speaking, it was a Back to Black Award. Um, and I shared that to my school. It's like a whole assembly. Yeah. So I was like standing in front of all the students telling them about my motivational speaking journey. Um, it was pretty nerve wracking, but I'm glad that I obviously got it over with and people could actually just know why I wasn't at school that day because I was at an event speaking and that just kind of cleared the air. Um, but um, when I first shared what I did, I think two weeks after I started to get cyberbullied um, on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and then later on, we found out it was somebody from my school, like in my actual class that I'd obviously grown up with um, okay. from reception um so that was really like painful for me mm. and because i was different to other kids um i started to get like kind of bullied i would say um in my school because they'd be reading like roll doll books love roll doll books anyways so but do I, yeah. reading roll doll books um or david rallyan books and then i'd be reading rich dad poor dad and i just wow. remember this kind of vision of me reading wait, it and wait. then people just Hold up. At what age? <laughs> wait, wait, hold up. At what age were you reading Rich Dad Poor Dad? I think I was 10. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> wow. At 10, you were reading Rich Dad Poor yeah. Dad. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> thank you. I'm so sorry um, to interrupt, but I am honestly, I'm like, wow. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thanks to my mum. She kind of obviously introduce me to that book which I'm really really grateful that I read it as well yeah. um but I just remember this clear vision of me reading the book and people just making fun of me for it like mm. oh rich dad why are you reading that book what is it about blah 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 I, that's the first time I kind of realized that I was really different to everyone else yeah. um just in terms of like my mindset because I was like five years ahead or even 10 years ahead yeah in that matter when they were like quite in that like, immature phase I would say I was, I was still pretty immature I can be immature sometimes now but I was still like mentally in a different place compared to everyone in my class. So that was the first time that I kind of realized I was really different. And me getting cyberbullied was one of probably the worst experiences that I've been through because I had no idea why they didn't like me. Yeah. I was like, when I went to the events, they were like, okay, so if you keep doing what you do and you love what you do, other people are going to like you. So I was like, okay, yeah. so I was, I was fine. I was like, okay, I'm getting booked for events. This is great. And um, then I start getting these horrible comments on my channel. And I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't add up. How am I doing what I love and helping other people and people still don't like me for it? So that was one of the worst experiences because I'd come home crying to my mum being like, why don't they like me? What am I doing wrong? Like, I don't understand how people can be such good people and still get hated for it. Yeah. Um, and that was a really big learning experience for me that not everyone is going to like you in what you do in your career. Um, but... I do get some weird comments or nasty comments here and there. I don't get it that much compared to lots of other people, which I'm really mm. grateful for, but I don't think anybody deserves hate. Um, but I think one comment I got back maybe like 
a month ago, um, last month, and it was like a comment on one of my motivation videos. And they were like, is this a joke? Are you guys being serious? The kid is probably being forced by their parent to write this. This is ridiculous. Why is this? I think I was like 11 or 10 when I was doing the motivation video. And I was like, why is this 11 year old girl telling us about experiences she hasn't even experienced yet? So then I did like a long comment, um, like a paragraph replying back to it, literally just telling them that what you're saying isn't true. Yeah. Um, and then at the end I was like, but if you feel the need to criticize or give your opinion on my videos, here's the playlist and watch more of them because I'm still getting the algorithm, the view Woo! from it. They're, yeah. they're putting a comment there. Um, so um, I think I just now kind of laugh at the comments. Yeah. Um, I got a message on Instagram and I was there, it was like in my request and it was like, you're really ugly. And I was wow. like, thank you. <laughs> and then like, <laughs> and then the day later, the day later they said, oh, um, I'm sorry. And I was like, it's okay. Um, but if you do feel the need, like I'm always here for you. Like you can speak to me about anything you need wow. to be. If you're gonna continue being rude, then obviously I'm not going to be replying back to messages. Um, and because people just don't know how to get attention. Yeah. And probably that comes from the household and just not being noticed. Ooh. So people just have to go straight onto someone's profile and just try and say anything that will kind of get at them. Absolutely. And so I think she definitely didn't know I was gonna reply back because a lot of people don't realize I do. I try to reply back with to all my inspirators messages. They need any advice, but I think that for her was really like confusing um, and like really shocking. But I'm just like, I'm always here if you need to talk to anyone, but if you're going to continue being rude, then obviously I'm not going to be there to, I'm not going to be, be nice to you if you're going to be rude to me, if yeah. that makes sense. It needs to work both ways. Good, good and good. Um, but I think I was just kind of almost um, just laugh at hate comments now. I just find them really funny because they don't know anything about me, but they still need, they still yeah. have the need to reply back and just comment about what they think is going on in my life, which they really don't know. Um, but just trying to let people know that even if you are a hater, then I'm still going to be here for you to listen to what you have to wow. say. If anything's going on in your heart, because hurt people hurt people. Absolutely. We're trying to heal people so that they can heal more people. <laughs> and I think what you've touched on, and from what I've gathered from your answer, some people understand, but I think, you have inner standing and that's to understand one's inner self and how you deal with things and how you recognize yeah. that, as you said, <laughs> hurt people, hurt people. And I wish at my, again at 13 that I knew that because unfortunately when I was younger, my father had passed away. And I think when I look at the world and I think about the way I saw the world, I saw it perhaps from not the most positive aspect, but it, it affected mm. me. And as I've grown older, I've been able to understand myself more and you have your vision board that I wanted to touch on as well. I would love to know, Vanessa, what can we expect from you in the next five years' time? And where would you love to be? What's, what, is, what is the ultimate dream? Um, so in the next five years, I'm going to be 14 this year, so 15 next year. So I'd, yeah, I'll be 20 in five years. Wow. Oh my gosh, 20 and five, that seems crazy. Let me just stop thinking about that because that's just going to freak me out. Um, but <laughs> I can see myself, um, hopefully, obviously, once COVID is over, traveling um, around the world, exploring new places with my family as well because I want to take, obviously, like one day when I can obviously pay for it and pay for the flights and pay for this gorgeous hotel, I'm going to take my mum somewhere that she really wants to go to and just really just say thank you for all that you've done for me um but in 20 years time um hopefully i see the talk show being on a really bigger platform like on like, the normal televisions that you see like sky whatever it is i'm um, just on a bigger platform hopefully with a bigger um crew whatever it is just kind of having it a bit more just helpful for us and just kind of being like well now other people can do this for us and we don't need to be doing it ourselves kind of um so definitely the show being on a bigger platform i definitely see myself hopefully being in a netflix tv show or just right. a tv show or maybe a film so in the next five years i hope um and i um do aim to kind of be in at least two big things All or right. big acting yeah. kind of things and also hopefully having my own like television show or um, I know I had the talk show, but like hosting a TV show. So you know how you have like Blue Peter CBBC presenters? I could see myself if they had a brand new show coming up, they would want me to be the person hosting it. And if it was a live event, that would be even better. Um, but 
I can definitely see myself kind of doing those um, or doing radio presenting, TV presenting, something along those lines in the media industry. Vanessa, I, I, I genuinely, <laughs> I'm so happy inside and my spirit feels warm Thank you. as I'm talking to someone like yourself. And I believe genuinely, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a projection out there. I genuinely believe that you're gonna be on Netflix. I'm gonna see you in Hollywood. And I can be like, wow, I interviewed that <laughs> young girl once. And honestly, I think, I have to obviously give thanks to your mum. I think your mum has a raised an incredible, I think incredible is an understatement, but I think your mum has raised a young girl who is, the world is, tip, is, is at your feet. The world is your oyster. And I genuinely you. believe you're pit So I've got to say thank you to your mum most of all. And again, thank you for just taking the time and having this conversation with me. And I would love to find out what would be a few of your final words for people watching, people that are going to watch as well. Um, my last words. Um, to be honest, I'm not really going to say anything inspiring or motivational because I don't really want to sugarcoat things. Um, yeah. Especially on the talk show, we talk about relevant topics. Um, so you've been talking about Black Lives Matter as well. So that's going to be a lot of episodes talking about about that as well and hearing the guest opinion and point of view on that um but if you just try and think about what's going on in the world right now um in lebanon there was recently an explosion yeah now i am not from lebanon i do not have any family members or any friends who are from there but when i saw those videos of the explosion my heart physically broke i physically felt like i was going to cry yeah so please <clears throat> i have a highlight um on my instagram if you go into important it has places that you can literally swipe up and there are sources so you can educate yourself on what's been going on there also in Yemen there's been a massive humanitarian crisis yeah. a water crisis um and they're saying at the end of the year half of the population could be wiped out yeah which is insane to me and then people are still saying silent on this so although I still do talk about Black Lives Matter I'm still trying to remind people that there are still other things going on in the world too um so please do go into my highlight um on my Instagram there are places or just a post that you can look on and read about on how you can aid and help Lebanon. Also read about um, petitions that you can sign um, for Yemen as well. Um, try and donate to charities as well. Lebanon, they do have the Red Cross, um, which is basically a charity that you can donate to that will help them physically there um, in the country. So just anything you can do to kind of spread the word about it as well. Um, just trying to talk about it more um, because sometimes I still feel like I'm not doing enough. Yeah. Um, and even though compared to other people, I'm doing quite a lot. Sometimes I just still just sit with myself and I'm just like, am I really doing enough? Are people actually listening to what I'm saying? Um, so please do it, do whatever you can. Just spread the message and tell people about it. I'm um, trying, trying to fix 2020 in some kind of way. <laughs> Thank you for using the voice and the chance that you've had to speak about very, very relevant issues with Yemen and Lebanon, and so much more. And thank you for speaking about Black Lives Matter. People generally needed to hear that. I just got to say a massive, again, thank you for coming on. And I hope that I can get a part two out of you at some point as well. <laughs> that, would honestly, Definitely. that would honestly be amazing. And I would even love at some point to talk to the amazing woman that's your mother, that's raised the young lady that you are. That is honestly... I, again, my, my soul is happy and my spirit is glad. Thank you. And I'm not even religious, but I've had to use those terms because I don't think there's <laughs> anything else that encapsulates how I feel right now, honestly. So, Vanessa, I know that you're a busy young lady and I know you've got other stuff to do. So, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for having me. I had an amazing time. And I'm definitely up for a part two. Thank, thank you so much for having me as well. well thank you everyone for watching thank too. Thank you. Vanessa's just confirmed we're going to have a part two. Thank you for everybody that's watched. <laughs> to comment, like, share, subscribe, do it all. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you so and much. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs>